Ever think about what happened back in 2003? That massive blackout, I mean. Oh, yeah, the Northeast one, right? Uh-huh. Millions in the dark. Cities basically stopped. Traffic lights out. The whole thing. It was a wake-up call, I think, for a yes, lot of folks. Sure. Showed just how much we depend on all that uh, critical infrastructure. Exactly. Power grid, transportation, water. It all just has to work. And now you've got AI getting more and more involved in running these complex systems. Yeah, which makes you wonder, right? What happens when the tech that's supposed to make things smarter makes them more vulnerable, too? Well, that's exactly what we're going to dig into today. The Department of Homeland Security, the DHS, put out this new framework all about AI and how to keep those critical systems safe and secure. It's pretty fascinating, actually. I mean, they're not pretending the risks aren't there. Right. They're acknowledging AI's power, but saying, hey, hold on, we got to figure out how to use this thing responsibly, especially when it comes to stuff that affects everyone every day. Like our power grids or yeah. our transportation systems. Don't forget water treatment plants. Absolutely. All of that. It's uh, like we're handing the keys to our country's nervous system to this, well, powerful but untested driver. We like where we could go, but got to make sure they can handle the road, you know. Perfect analogy. So this framework, it's all about AI's role in critical infrastructure. You already mentioned power grids, transportation, water. But what are some other ways AI is being used or could be used in these areas? Specifics, you know, so people can really picture it. Okay, so think about traffic lights. But instead of just these time cycles, they adapt in real time to traffic flow, I mean, preventing gridlock, getting you home faster. Ooh, that'd be nice. Right. Or imagine a power grid that can predict when equipment's going to fail, like before it causes a blackout. Preventative maintenance, smart. Yep. Even leaks in water pipes, we're seeing AI used to spot those, saves water, prevents damage, all that. So tons of potential benefits. It does sound amazing, but, and you hinted at this earlier, the framework lays out these potential risks. Three big categories. And the first one, attacks using AI. That sounds like something at a, like a sci-fi movie almost. It might sound futuristic, but it's a real concern. Think about hacking tools, but powered by AI. Learning as they go, adapting to our defenses. Oh. Yeah. Just last year, researchers simulated an attack on a power grid using AI, I mean. And the results were scary. It found vulnerabilities way faster than traditional hacking methods. OK, so that's pretty unsettling. But then there's the second risk, attacks that are targeting the AI systems themselves. How does that even work? Well, every system has weaknesses, right? AI is no different. Take data poisoning, for example. Data poisoning. Yeah, hackers subtly mess with the data the AI relies on, makes the AI make bad decisions. Imagine that happening to the AI running traffic management. Sudden chaos, accidents, gridlock, you name it. Makes sense. And then the third one, the framework talks about AI systems just failing. On their own, I mean. Even if no one's trying to attack them. Isn't that possible? Even with good tech. Oh, absolutely. If an AI system is not designed right or implemented right, things can go wrong. Remember that self-driving car? The one that uh, tragically misidentified a pedestrian a couple years back? Yeah, I remember that. Horrible. That was the AI's perception algorithms failing. Now, imagine a similar failure, but in the AI controlling a dam. Or a nuclear power plant, even. It's a sobering thought. Yeah. Sounds like we're walking a tightrope here. Want the potential of AI? Got to be super cautious about the risks. So how does this framework actually tackle all this? What's their plan? Smart move they made was to use existing standards, specifically from NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. They've already got these strong cybersecurity standards, so the DHS is basically building on that. Makes it way more practical, you know? So not starting from scratch, but earlier you said this framework's voluntary. Doesn't that make it kind of like a suggestion box? What's to stop companies from just ignoring it? That's the thing, though. It might not be a law, but there's this uh, incentive to comply. Think about it. Would you trust a company that ignores basic AI safety? Especially for systems that affect all of us. Good point. Bad PR waiting to happen. Exactly. Plus, most of these organizations, they're already working with the government on security stuff anyway. The framework gives them a shared language, best practices, all of that. Improves that relationship. So it's about trust building, mm. encouraging responsibility. But does this put the U.S. in a good spot, globally speaking, when it comes to AI and critical infrastructure, I mean? It definitely does. Being proactive like this, putting out this framework, it's part of a bigger picture. The U.S. wants to lead the world in responsible AI, you know. Setting the standard. Right. And they're already doing stuff like pilot projects, AI-powered security at airports and borders, partnering with international groups, sharing what they're learning. So it's happening. 
So we're not just thinking about our own infrastructure here. We're trying to set the example for everyone else. Exactly. And and this brings up a question I think is important for all of us. As AI gets more and more woven into, well, how our society runs, what's our role in all this, as individuals, as citizens, I mean, do we just sit back and let the government and corporations handle it all? Or do we speak up? Exactly. Demand transparency, accountability, make sure ethical concerns are part of the conversation. When these powerful technologies are being developed, that's something everyone listening should think about, really. Great point to leave on. We've talked about a lot, haven't we? The potential of AI for our critical infrastructure, those risks that come with it, the steps being taken to well, keep things from going sideways. But this is just the beginning of a much bigger discussion. We want to hear from you, your thoughts, worries, ideas, anything about how we make sure AI in these areas is safe, secure. It affects us all, so. Right. Go to our website, our social media, share your thoughts. Let's keep this conversation going.